Hello and welcome Pixels! Grease Pencil gives you the opportunity to draw in Blender and create 2D or 3D line based drawings. You can use it for 2D animation clips or for 3D grid like visualization. In episode 1 I want to give you a general overview for the drawing mode and its interface in Blender 2.8.2. Just to inform you, I am drawing with a graphic tablet and not with the mouse for this tutorial. If you start Blender, you can choose between different workspaces, general, 2D animation, sculpting, etc. 2D animation is the best choice to use the Grace Pencil tool. However, you are able to draw in any other workspace as well. We choose 2D animation and enter this workspace here. It looks definitely a little bit different as general workspace. I want to show you step by step where to find the basic tools and settings. I will give you an overview now and deepen the topic later in several chapters. Timestamps are in the description below if you want to jump to a specific topic. Currently we are in draw mode. This lets you know that we can start drawing immediately. You can switch here between object, edit, sculpt, draw and weight mode. In this area here you are able to select your brush and adjust the settings like brush, color, radius, strength and so on. On the left side is the toolbar. Change quickly tools for your needs and add helpful supporting lines. Tools like pencil, fill, eraser and the cutter tool are very handy. You will find the dope sheet and the timeline on the bottom part of the screen. This will be important if you want to start animating. The three function in the middle top space of your viewport don't have the specific name, but I will call them reference of drawing. They control the behavior of stroke in space. You have to make precise distinctions between layer and the grease pencil object in the outliner. Define closed objects and other objects in your scene. Grid and mirror modifier are the last point on my list. I will immediately start to deepen these points, but first I want to mention that we are still here in 3D viewport. Only difference is that we currently selected the camera view and used its canvas. We are able to leave this view more freely in 3D space. Use the numbers on the number pad for the basic views. Different is as well the white background in our 3D viewport. It can be modified in the world properties here. Note that we are currently in the material preview. If you start a new scene with 2D animation, you will automatically start in draw mode. Blender already created a stroke object in the outliner. It defines an empty object which will be filled with your brush strokes. In draw mode, you build your object with your brush strokes. In object mode, you are able to transform, rotate and scale your object or add any kind of modifiers to your drawing. Edit mode is useful for modifying your single brush strokes in detail. Your stroke is similar to a Bezier curve and you are able to adjust the anchor points with smooth, rotate and scale. Select anchor points or whole brush strokes as well here. Edit mode is very important for 3D painting which I will show you in one of my next tutorials. In sculpt mode you are getting as well a new tool palette. Smooth, thickness, grab and push are just some of them. You don't have to redraw your brush stroke again if you're not 100% satisfied. If you don't want to move your mouse cursor always to this function position and select a wanted mode, you have the shortcut Ctrl plus Tab as option B. This shortcut will open a radial menu and you can switch very fast to the wanted mode. Let's look closely at the top bar for the brush and its settings. If you click on this little icon here, you will get a listing for all linked brushes of this Blender file. Just try them out for yourself. I personally like the pencil brush for some sketching and the ink pen for outlines. 
The next function is a list of all materials for brushes. Basically we have already a black color for brush strokes and as well a red one. The third icon is a little bit different because it is filled. It is similar to the lasso tool like in Adobe Photoshop and automatically fill your selection with this grey color. The last one is called black dots and is some kind of weird. I will not amplify this material right now. To be blunt, you can't create materials or colors for your brush here. You are only able to change the color of one existing material and change all other brush strokes with this material at the same time. The next function is called radius and should be clear. It defines your brush radius and can be changed here. The shortcut for changing your brush size is the F button. Rise or lower the radius and enter it with a left click. Strength is a specific value for the opacity of your brush stroke. It depends on pen pressure as well if you get softer brush strokes, but generally you are able to draw with 100% color or less. This value defines the input of maximum color opacity on full pressure. Shortcut is Shift plus F. Advanced, Stroke, Curves and Cursor is not part of this basic overview tutorial, but you are able to modify your brush stroke here in more detail. In my case, four tools are often in use. Draw is already selected and defines that you are able to draw brush strokes right now. Fill is a little bit tricky. You need to select this tool and the proper fill material for correct interaction. Select your wanted filling material and just click to a closed form of brush strokes. It is not important to draw this form with just one brush stroke. You can create a specific form with many brush strokes and the fill tool will do the rest. Consider that there may be overlapping parts of the fill and the outline. The Erase tool is a rubber function. Shortcuts are as well F for Radius and Shift F for Strength. Or you put in your wanted value in the top bar settings. If you draw with a graphic tablet, you should be able to rotate your pencil and use the backside for erasing. The Cutter tool removes not wanted parts of your brush stroke. You have to do and click. Hold this click and do in selection for a working result. Next there are some prepared geometric forms which need to be placed first. Adjust displacement and press enter for a confirmation. All of these constructs have an even stroke line, but you are able to change this if you switch to sculpt mode and change the thickness. On the bottom part of Blender is the dope sheet and a little bit hidden the timeline. Those two workspaces are important for animation. Currently you just draw on the first frame. If you want to know more about animating, you have to exercise patience because I will need a little bit longer to present this topic in a new video tutorial soon. Or you check out other tutorials on YouTube here. As I mentioned before, I said that they control the behavior of stroke in space. So if you leave the camera view now and switch to 3D space, you can see that all of our brush strokes are flat like a plane. But you are able to rotate your point of view around it. At the moment you draw all of your lines based on the origin. This point is not visible in draw mode and you have to switch to object mode to see it. Basically you should orient to the origin point because this is maybe relevant for your further steps in animation. Cursor was so far not very important for me, but your lines should be orientated to the 3D cursor. Very cool is the surface option, because you are able to draw directly on mesh surfaces now. Optionally you can choose an offset for your brush stroke for the surface.
stroke is left. This function is only suggestive if you draw in 3D space and not with use of the axis. Basically your brush stroke would be placed random in 3D space, but with this function activated you can connect brush strokes which belongs together. It takes a other brush stroke as a target and use this as a reference for the beginning of your next brush stroke. It is very good for sketching and depends on your current point of view. I jump to the next point which handles the position of your next brush strokes. If you open the drawing plane function you can choose between view, front, side, top and cursor. If you have already worked in Blender you should be familiar with the 3D axis X, Y and Z. Each axis defines a specific direction in 3D space. All of this main axis starts from zero and run to the positive and negative direction. If you choose front as your drawing plane, all your brush strokes will have a zero epsilon value. If you choose side, all of your brush strokes will have a zero x value. Same with top. So you can use the axis for a drawing on a specific direction. The view option is rather random. If you draw something here, your lines will be placed on no specific position and can be anywhere in 3D space. Cursor is for me as well a little bit confusing and I would not recommend it for the beginning. In my opinion layers are indispensable. For me as a graphic artist I often use a layer for sketching, one layer for the outlines and another layer for the coloring, or for each color one layer. When you're in draw mode you will find the layers in the property shelf under stroke. The first category should be layers here and the basic setup for the 2D animation workspace already defines two layers, lines and fill. Lock or unlock a specific layer here. Enable or disable your layers there. And for 2D animation you find onion skinning as well here for enabling or disabling. Add or remove layers with this button on the side or arrange your layer management here. The layer on top of the list is the layer which lays above all other in viewboard. And the last layer is the one in the back, for example the fill layer. You can change the opacity of the layers here. Very important is to remember that all brush strokes, layers and colors belong to one object. If you switch to object mode you are able to move, rotate or scale all of them. This object will be shown in the outliner as well. If you deselect your object, you will be not able to switch back to draw mode because you need to select an object which is made for drawing. For example you can select a sphere and switch to draw mode. If you want to create a new separate object besides your first drawing, for example another character, then you have to press shift A for the add menu, go to crease pencil and select blank or stroke. When you select stroke, Blender creates a basic stroke for you. If you don't need this, go to edit mode and delete it. Now everything is prepared for your next drawing if you switch to draw mode next. As I mentioned before, colors for drawing are materials in Blender. So if you want to adjust or create a new color for brush stroke or fill, Go here to material tab in the property shelf. You find a list of all materials in your scene. Like layers you are able to show or hide a specific color or lock it. Move and selected material up or down in the list is for personal management, but very important is to delete or add new colors. Each single color need a new material slot. If you want to use 20 colors in your scene, you have to add 20 materials. And click the plus icon for adding a new material.
Now you open the new slot in the list, but your material is still not here for adjustment. Click on New Next and open the settings for the material. Choose now if you want to create a brush stroke or an filling material. Enable the wanted one and disable the other one. For sure you are able to enable both options, but in my opinion this is not advertisable. For creating a stroke just click on the color panel and adjust your wanted color. If you want to add a specific value, then you can select the RGB or hex tab as well. Same is working for the fill material. It may be possible that the alpha channel is on zero for the fill color. Pull the controller to one or enter one for full visibility of your fill color. The grid in the prepared 2D animation workspace is very light colored and just a subtle contrast to the white background of the scene. If you switch to isoteric front, side or top view, then the grid disappears. If you need the grid here as well, then enter the overlays menu and enable grid. However, the grid doesn't show up in the camera view. It doesn't matter if you draw in 2D character or draw in 3D space. The mirror modifier is always very helpful. Go to modifiers in the property shelf and add the mirror modifier. Choose an axis for the point of intersection. Optional you can select a specific object, material or layer. Now your drawing will be mirrored. If you switch to edit mode and do some adjustments, then the modifier will be disabled till you switch back to object or draw mode. That's all so far. I hope I was able to give you a decent overview for the crease pencil function in Blender. Thank you very much for watching. It would be very nice to give this video a like and or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more game dev videos. Cheers.